Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. I hope you liked my top 10 Power BI questions video that I posted last week. If you haven't watched it, please find the link to the video in the descriptions below. Today I'm sharing another set of 10 most repeated actual exam questions for the PL300 test so that those who are planning to write the exam this year or early next year can be benefited and practice for the PL300 exam to get certified. I have taken these questions from various different question banks so as to give you more variety and higher quality of questions with various different difficulty levels. You can practice these questions or go through them just before your exam to help you revise your syllabus and practice the most important DAX formulas from the questions that have a high probability to be repeated in your exam. So let's get started with the top 10 questions that you might see in your PL300 Power BI certification exam, part two. So let's start with question number one. You have the visual shown here. Now you need to identify which kind of visual this is in Power BI. The options that are available are decomposition tree visual, key influencer visual, breakdown custom visual, and horizontal bar chart. Can you guess what the correct answer for this question is? If you have guessed decomposition tree visual, then you are right. So if you go to Microsoft Power BI Learn website, you will see what kind of visual the decomposition tree visual is. This is usually used for root cause analysis. And you can learn more about it on the Microsoft Learn website. Now let's go to question number two. So you import an HR data set into Power BI Desktop. You need to see how many empty, er empty and error rows are there in a data set as shown in the solution below. The options that you have are custom column, column profile, column quality and column distribution. So you will understand if you learn more about Power BI that there are three options that are available for identifying your data set in a column. So first is column profile, the other is column quality and the next is column distribution. So custom column is not the right answer anyways. Now for this question, the correct answer is column profile and column quality. Because column quality allows you to analyze valid error or empty values for all col columns in a single view. And column profile allows you to analyze va value distribution among empty or error values for the selected column. Right? So this depiction, this picture, this visual, this will give is for the column profile. And this section which shows you valid error and empty that is used for column quality right now let's move on to question number three you have employee and salary tables in a data model you need to include employee salaries in the employee table as shown in the below images so you have an employee table with employee ID company and name and then you have a salary table with employee ID and salary now you need to create the final table in which the employee table itself has another column added with salary so which of the options you would choose the options available are append queries, merge queries, merge queries as new and append queries as new. The correct answer is merge queries. So you should use merge queries transformation to include employee salaries in the employee table. This transformation allows you to merge two or more tables into an existing table based on a column that is common between all the participating tables. Now let's move on to question number four. You're creating a data set and modeling the data for Power BI report. The report should contain up-to-date information. The tables in the data model are shown in the exhibit and are described below. So I don't have the exhibits, but you don't need to see them. You can just visualize and you need to just know how the records are getting updated in these tables. So you have a sales table. It has details of the sales made to customers and it has a large number of records. Many new records are added daily. Then there is a table which is known as customer. It is the list of all the customers and customers have few thousand records that are additions and updates regularly. Then there is a territory table. It has the geographical area for the sales team and territory are rarely updated, obviously because there will be very specific territories that are pre-existing for the sales team. And then there is a date 
table which is uh, created by DAX. Now you need to select the correct storage mode to meet your company's requirements. Which storage mode you should use for the following requirements? You have to use customer and territory for slicers. So the slicers in Power BI work when your uh, tables are using the correct storage mode. You have dual, dead query, import and live connection as the options available. So obviously because customer table is getting updated regularly whereas the territory table is not getting updated regularly and it is very rarely updated. So for territory you will use import and for customers you would use direct query. So that's why the correct answer is dual here because you need to use, use both kind of storage modes for your uh, for customer and territory to be used as slicers. Now let's move on to question number five. You import an HR data set into Power BI Desktop. You need to find distinct and unique rows for each column in a data set appearing in a single view as shown below. So which data quality option should you use? So now if you see uh, you need uh, in the red box uh, there are unique as well as distinct number which is shown for each column right. So for this you need to enable which kind of option. The options that are available are column distribution, column profile, column quality and custom column and the right answer is column distribution. So column distribution is always used uh, to show distinct and unique values for each column in a single view. Now let's move on to question number six. Your manager encounters slowness in the Power BI report. The network and server are server are operating at optimal speed. Now you need to identify issues which are affecting the report performance. So which two tools are there in Power BI that can help you meet your goal? There are the four options are available which are performance analyzer, query diagnostic, SQL server profiler and performance monitor. So the right answer to this question is performance analyzer and query diagnostics. So performance analyzer shows you how much it takes to render a visual. It also measures the amount of time it takes to retrieve the data. And the query diagnostic allows you to diagnose query performance and transformations which are included in it. So you need to use both to identify where your Power BI reports are getting stuck or what is the issue that is happening with the performance of the report. Now let's move on to question number seven. You plan to create a report in Power BI for your company sales using the schema shown in the below exhibit. You plan to create a visual that shows monthly sales to compare with the previous month's sales. You need to create a measure to determine the previous month's sales. Right? How should you create the measure? The table that has it has a sales table, a customer table and a product table. Sales has customer ID, product ID, date and amount. Customer has customer ID and customer name. Product has product ID and product name. And then there is a date table which just has date as a column. So if you have to compare the sales with the sales of the previous month, the formulas that in the options that are available are calculate, open bracket sum, sales amount, comma, date add, sales date date minus one year. Then the next option is calculate sum, sales amount, comma, parallel period, sales date date minus one month. Then you have calculate some sales amount comma parallel period sales date date minus one year and then you have calculate some sales amount comma parallel period sales date date minus one quarter. So now because you are trying to compare the sales monthly from the previous month and uh, you are and so the DAX formula that needs to be used here is parallel period and uh, the correct op option here is option number two because it's showing month instead of year and quarter right so that's the option number b which is the correct answer the parallel period shifts the date by the number of periods the period is specified in month and the number is minus one so that's why this generates the date range for the previous month question number eight you have sales data as shown in the below exhibit you need to create visualization that displays the sales for each quarter and the percentage change from the same quarter in the previous year. Right? Which tax function should you use to create the measure? The columns that are available are order number, order date, shipping date, price and product. 
the options that you have are divide sum order price minus calculate sum order price same period last year date date calculate sum order price same period last year date date the second option is divide sum order price minus sum order price minus calculate sum order price comma date add date 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 minus one quarter comma sum order price minus calculate sum order price comma date add date date dot date minus one quarter third option is sum order price minus calculate sum order price comma date add date 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 minus one quarter and the fourth option is sum order price minus calculate sum order price comma same period last year date date the correct answer is the first option which is divide sum open brackets order price close brackets minus calculate open bracket sum open brackets order square bracket price close bracket comma same period last year date date comma calculate sum order price same period last year date date so the DAX same period last year function evaluates dynamically the period for the previous year as we saw that in the last question as well then you subscribe the value from the same period and then divide by the value to calculate the percentage same period last year and it generates a range shifted one year from the dates in the date field right so don't get confused or with these complex power bi dax formulas i will have an upcoming video in which i will explain you some of the dax formulas that you get to see in your power bi pl300 certification exam now let's move on to question number nine you have an order table that contains two date columns order date and shipping date as shown in the exhibit below a date table has two relationships to the order table for the two date fields the relationship on the order date column is the active relationship now you need to create a visualization that displays the total price of orders for each quarter based on both the order date and shipping date column so how did you create the measure for sales by shipping date so here in the question you can see currently the active relationship is the relationship with the order date and the shipping date relationship is inactive now you need to make sure that that relationship with the shipping date gets active in your DAX formula so the formulas the, the options that are available are sales by shipping date is equal to sum x calculate order price use relationship order shipping date 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 the next option is sales by shipping date is equal to sum calculate order price comma use relationship order shipping date 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 third option is sales by shipping date is equal to calculate sum order price comma related order shipping date comma date date and the fourth option is sales by shipping date is equal to calculate sum order price comma use relationship bracket share open bracket order square bracket shipping date comma date date can you guess the correct answer the correct answer is the fourth option which is sales by shipping date is equal to calculate op open bracket sum open bracket order price use relationship orders shipping date comma date date you need to use calculate function so that you force the filter to use the inactive relationship on shipping date you should use the sum function to calculate the total sum totals or column and you should use the use relationship function to override the active relationship and use the other relationship on shipping date so here you need to make sure that use relationship is a major answer hint for this question Now let's move on to question number 10. You create a Power BI report containing several visuals. Users report performance issues when using visuals on the Power BI report. You need to identify which visuals are taking the longest to process. So which five actions should you perform in sequence to answer the select the appropriate action in the correct order. Now in usually in your PL300 exams you might have see this question in a form where answers are given in an specific order and you need to change the order of the options so that you can get the right sequence 
but here that is not doable so in a PPT I was able to show you the options in this way where the already the order has been given I need to select the right order based on the options that are available so the option number one has uh, first you use start query diagnostic then you enable tracing and diagnostic options third is start recording and performance analyzer fourth is run Azure speed test fifth is restart Power BI desktop the second option is restart Power BI desktop then you enable tracing and diagnostic options then you add a blank report page then you run Azure speed test then you stop recording and review the results the third option is add a blank report page then restart Power BI desktop then start recording in performance analyzer then interact with the visual and then stop recording and review the results and the fourth option is restart Power BI desktop then start query diagnostic then interact with the visuals then run as your speed test and finally stop recording and review the results so can you guess the correct answer obviously it's the option number three which is add a blank report page and restart and then restart the power BI desktop then start recording in performance analyzer then you interact with the visuals and you stop recording to understand the results right so these were the top 10 questions that you can see in your PL300 Power BI exam next. I hope you liked these questions and you were able to guess most of the answers to these questions easily. Also a request to all of you guys again who are watching. 87% of our audience has not subscribed to our channel yet. So please hit the subscribe button as it motivates us to keep working hard and share more videos with you every week. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, please like and share our videos to show your support. Have a great day and best of luck for your PL300 certification exam preparation. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.